and welcome to Let's Talk About. So I was thinking quite hard about what I wanted to be the first video of these that I made and I settled on anxiety. Um, one of the reasons I want to do this is because uh, on Monday, on the 10th, it was Mental Health Awareness Day. So I kind of thought it was appropriate. So in my intro video to this little series, it's linked down below if you haven't seen it, I mentioned how I would take a general topic to start with and then in my video I'd actually explain more of a specific question and talk about more in depth because when I was thinking about talking about anxiety I I wrote down an awful lot because I I have suffered with anxiety extensively so this video is how my anxiety has influenced me as a person also I quickly wanted to address the fact that it seems to be a youtuber trope that every youtuber seems to have anxiety um, but believe me it takes a certain kind of person to sit on their own in a room talk to a camera and upload it to the internet for strangers to see. Like a really certain kind of person. So it really doesn't surprise me that there are a lot of YouTubers who do deal with anxiety. And then also who talk about it on their channels because it's so much easier, it's, it's weird how it's so much easier to talk about things like this to people who you do not know than to your friends or to your family. I'm mainly flagging it up in case of any young professional reviewers who seem to think that oh every YouTuber has anxiety, it's cool if I have it too, believe me, you do not want to have anxiety. It's the worst thing. It's just really not great. So about me. I guess there's no point I could ever tell you that I developed anxiety or anything. I never became anxious. I just genuinely have always, always, always been this way. And the problem is when I was younger, I didn't, un I didn't understand what it was. I mean, when you're like, Eight. How are you meant to know that it's like it's a genuine like it's a thing? It's not just you being really fucking weird. Well, I was a weird kid anyway, but that's not the point. Like I remember things like if I would go to a sports match and I would have to be dressed differently than everyone else, I would walk to school holding my letter, reading it over and over and over again, checking that I was completely right, checking the day was right, checking the time was right, checking I was checking I was no way that somebody could tell me I've done something wrong and that I look stupid or embarrass me. Because I guess being singled out by something like that is genuinely one of my biggest fears. It scares the shit out of me and still does. I feel like that weird fear of being singled out for doing something like wrong is I guess one of the reasons I as a person am, I am a massive perfectionist. I can be obsessively perfect about things. And I think that was just from the honest the fear of doing something completely wrong or doing something I shouldn't have done or but like never something that I shouldn't have done like maliciously or anything. Because I mean, if you're gonna do it maliciously, you know that you're doing something wrong. I was just terrified of doing something wrong that I didn't even realize. One of my earliest memories that I can remember is when we were on a family holiday in Spain somewhere. I don't think my younger brother was actually born. So I was maybe like three, I'll put somewhere here what my mum has told me I actually was age-wise. But I just remember that I was getting, it was my birthday, it was during Easter, there was a cake, it had purple flowers on it and all the, all the like waiters in the restaurant of the hotel started to sing happy birthday to me. And that I think is the root of every single anxious that, oh, I genuinely think that is the root of all my anxiety. It, it sounds really weird to that, I felt like, I genuinely think that is the root of every single of it, my anxiety because it genuinely it's always the same kinds of things. So it's always my biggest fear, I guess, if I am the center of attention where I in a situation where I have not designed it so that I am the center of attention. With YouTube, I make I can make myself the center of attention. You're watching me. A hundred, a few hundred people are gonna watch me, but because I have designed that, I have allowed that to be, I have allowed that to happen because I can go and edit myself, I can go and, so you're seeing a very, you can see like a, a kind of censored version of myself now, but I'm just so afraid of attention being called to me where I just, I don't want it or I can't handle it or it's, it's just, it's like a simmering level of like, <laughs> which is, I guess one of the reasons I really like to be alone. I really, really enjoy being alone. I mean, I'm a fucking YouTuber. I have to spend a lot of time alone as it is. But I really do enjoy it. And I think it's because I'm so calm. And I know there are people who really hate being alone. People who are so scared of being lonely. But the thing is, I, I know that I'm not being lonely. I'm just like, I like to be alone. It's my choice to be alone. Being, loneliness isn't necessarily your choice. That's a whole other video that we can do. But as a child, I was always very anxious. But I didn't know what it was. So I always assumed that that was normal. That was just the way I was. I mean, you're a child, how are you supposed to tell that someone else doesn't feel like that? 
I just, I knew there was something, but I just couldn't, I couldn't explain it. So let's move on in time and let's stick me in secondary school. Oh god. For those of you who haven't been following me for very long, I went to two secondary schools, one from year 7 to 11, and that was an all-girls state school, and then one for sixth form, which is 16 to 18, um, which was my boarding school that I went to. That school was also primarily a boys' school and only admitted girls from sixth form, so there were about 60 girls in our year, whereas in my year at my old school there were 120, just in my year. So you can kind of see this big dynamic shift going on there. I'm going to quickly skip to that school because quite a few people I've realised have said to me is that I am shy. And if you watch my videos you know that I, do I come off as a shy person? No. It's something that I have a massive problem with when people say that I'm really shy because that's something I just do not associate at all with my character and with who I am. I'm just like, I'm not. It's something I will really argue with someone over being like, I'm not shy, I'm not shy, I'm not shy. But I'm, I'm not, I guess, if people don't know me I'm not very talkative. Because I'm like, I don't want to say things that are going to embarrass me, or like, it's just, or maybe you just really don't want me to talk to you, so I'm just not going to talk to you. And I suffer from a massive case of resting bitch face. I'm not angry. It's just my face. People often think, <laughs> I've had people who genuinely dislike me because I don't talk to them and I have a massive resting bitch face. And then they see me in my videos and I'm like, talking, I'm like, la 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 la. People genuinely seem to think I have a problem with them because of it, and it is hilarious to me. But it has happened, which I find strange. I was wondering, is this to do with the fact that I changed schools? And I asked a couple of friends from my old school, being like, would you, would you ever say that I'm shy? And yet obviously I asked my friends, so it's different. But they kind of said, no, not really. Like, I was definitely still shy in year seven and year eight, but I kind of came into my, like, my element in year 11. I was in a really good group. I was so, here's the thing, I was so comfortable. I was very, very comfortable with my surroundings, but like a couple people I would still happily punch in the face. But let's not, that's a whole other, actually no, one thing I'm very, very, very bad with it. I'm a very jumpy person. And that I can put down 100% of the fact that I was bullied. But we're not gonna get into that because nobody wants a stop story. But yeah, screw you to the people who fucked me over a little bit mentally. Great. I'm kind of over it, not to give them the satisfaction that they did that much to me mentally. But yeah, skip forward to then sixth form and I realize more and more when I get embarrassed, I go bright fucking red. I go like fuchsia fucking red. People have seen me do this. They will know. I go bright fucking red. And then when somebody goes, oh Emma, you're going red. I'm like, oh, bitch. I know. It's like when your face is on fucking fire, do you not fucking think I know that I'm bright red? Like, please point it out so I, the rest of me can go like a fucking tomato. Thanks. Oh, I have so many issues still to work through. Like, if you see someone who is blushing, don't fucking point it out. Don't be that dick. Don't. Oh, for the love of God, don't be that person. You, oh my God, no. But I think that really actually badly impacted me when I realised I started doing that. Because then I would get embarrassed before I was even embarrassed because I was really embarrassed about getting bright red. Which is actually one of the reasons for the for six months of the first my first year, I wore foundation every single day. Because I was just like terrified. I was like, uh, boys, uh, ter, scared, uh, ter, uh, boys. It was kind of also during year 11 and the last couple of years that I've been watching a lot more YouTubers who talk about like mental health, who talk about sex, who talk about relationships, who talk about that. Like Hannah Witten is one of my favorite YouTubers, just as an example. But like people who don't just make sketches and like, this is also where you can see my channel life crisis is starting to simmer. I'm like, oh, I wanna make this kind of videos. Ah. But I started watching more videos and I started understanding that I am genuinely not the only person who A, feels like this and B, it's not something that is just who I am. It's something that's just, yeah, my just, yeah. But I feel like that because I knew I wasn't like, it's cause, okay, it's cause I knew I just wasn't crazy, but I knew some, but I knew other people dealing with it, but dealing exactly the same things that I was having to deal with. It actually helped me cope so, so much because I knew I wasn't just fucking weird and that there wasn't just something fundamentally wrong with me. It was an actual thing. And I feel like the moment you know what is kind of, in inverted commas, wrong with you, you can just process it a lot better and you just, it's a lot better for you to have that comfort of going, if someone goes, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, anxiety, ah, big flashing, it's, ah. because the amount of times before I'd had people just say, oh, just act normal. I'm like, I don't, I don't, what is act normal? That. Which is then when I meet people who are so obviously not anxious, I'm like, how do, how do you how do you do the thing? How do you ha, ha, hmm. My biggest fear is that someone is gonna comment on this video and say, oh, you don't have anxiety for X, Y, Z, you're making it up for views, you're making it up for attention. That is a fear that goes 
all the way into my chest. Ah, oh, the idea of people invalidating what you really do feel and what like you think is such a huge issue for you by saying, oh, you don't have this because I have it worse or something like that. It's like, fuck people who do, oh. It's just not fair to have somebody invalidate your feelings, especially when it's like, meh. <laughs> the words are not coming out anymore. Also, you clocked on to how quickly I've started speaking. Like, Ugh. But mainly I think because at this age I've started like, I really started looking into it, I started understanding it more, I started like realising there were other people out there. And the thing is, I started talking to people. I started talking to people who I knew, I started talking to people, my friends, I started, it's such, it's so nice when you like, people go, yeah, I have that too. And even if it's like, yeah, I have that sometimes too. Or people go like, I have that all the time, I get you. It's, it's so comforting and it's so nice. If you're struggling with anxiety or you're just anxious, just talk to people. I, it's fucking terrifying. It's fucking terrifying talking to people, but it will make you feel so, so much better. Believe me, I wish I'd done it so much earlier. I hope that was coherent. Uh, so, who, like, where am I at, anxious wise? Now, I mean, I just started university. This has been, uh, it has been hard. But what actually got me thinking about this as well, one of the reasons I really wanted to talk specifically about anxiety was Chris and I were having a conversation about had we at any point fundamentally changed who each other is. Like, I didn't know what to say if he had or not, I, I just didn't know. But I was thinking about it and I realised, because he is a very social person, he is ridiculously social. I'm like, how do you, how do you do that? And I guess I started doing the thing where when you force yourself into a social situation you do not want to be in. I have been in so many social situations for the last couple of weeks. I've just been like, no, do not want to be here, no. But it's been the best fucking thing for me. It has been the best thing to turn up to things that I don't want to go to. I mean, turn up and like speak to people that I don't really want to speak to, but I'm like, I should probably fucking speak to someone. Because when you do that, it calms you down. Obviously you're running through the worst case scenario, but even just, it's a lot of the stupid stuff that people probably like think, Emma, that's how, why do, would you not just do that? It's like just speaking to somebody outside of seminar, just speaking to somebody outside let, just speaking to someone new instead of hiding in my phone is a really big deal for me. I like going to like some events that societies have organised and even if I haven't had anyone to go with, I have still gone and I've had a good time. That to me, like two years ago, is like no, 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 no. Still to me now, it's like no, I'm still being dragged by myself to go do it. I guess it's about coping. I'm still kind of coping. I mean, I'm, just, I'm coping, but I'm working on it. And I think it's getting a lot better. My camera just decided to die on me, so I'm gonna have to wrap it up here. One thing I have done in terms of my anxiety journey is I've actually like made a pledge to myself that I will go see a counsellor and I will go talk to a professional about it. And I'm just trying to wonder now why it's taken me 18 years to come to that conclusion. Like I could have done it at my last school, I could have done it at the school before that, I just never did. And I can understand why, because I've just been doing it, why it could be terrifying to go and ask for help and to like go and actually see someone about the issues you have. It can just be very difficult to understand if you haven't been there yourself. One thing I realised I completely forgot to tell you about was that I had a lot of panic attacks and I, I suffer from panic attacks. Um, on my old school it was one of the worst things that literally could happen to me. There was one week I think where I had like almost one in every single lesson and at that point I was kind of made to go see a counsellor but in, once I like stopped having panic attacks on like on the regular um they kind of once it became less noticeable they kind of just stopped needing me to see people but that is a lot better than it used to be because I'm just I don't know I've just part of growing up maybe I don't know but yeah when I was little I didn't understand what was going on then I started learning it now I know and now I'm actually for the first time going to go and get some help <laughs> How has it actually influenced me as a person? I'm terrified of being late things, like a lecture, or if it's like a train, or if it's like anything like that, I will be 100% on time. I get so terrified when I'm with someone else, who's like, oh, it's fine, we'll be fine. And I'm like, no, we have to go. Some of my friends and like family will know my anxiety, like when there's a thing that we need to be at at that time, and if we're not there at that time, the whole fucking world ends. <laughs> and also one thing is I really would suggest opening up to your family about it because sometimes it is genetic, so you may realise, oh, that's that's where it comes from. And then you will feel a lot better about yourself, because you're like, hey, mate, yeah, no, that's okay. I will leave in the description box some links for you to go to about information about anxiety, things about like websites that calm you down, that I found really good, and just stuff like that. All the goodness it will be in the description box, along with the last video that I made. 
So yes, on this video I would recommend you to leave any suggestions of future videos. Uh, if you suffer from anxiety yourself, any coping mechanisms that you have, let me know down below, that would be amazing, your experience with it, and just, you know, we just help each other out in the comments, that would be cool. Slash help me out, that would also be great. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, if you really enjoyed it, give it a share, that would like, literally help me out so much, you have no idea. Sharing is like the way forward. <laughs> Sharing and caring, guys. And subscribe if you want to see more. Um, yeah. Bye guys. Mwah. I am aware of how atrocious the lighting in this video is. Let's just not talk about it.